Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we are looking at the new cards for the new expansion in Hearthstone, Journey to Anguru. So to see it right now, you come over here, you click crafting to go into crafting mode, you click over here in this filter to go to Anguru, and now you're just seeing the new Anguru cards. I should point out, they're, if they're in blue, that means they are the enough cards that I could craft with Arcane Dust if they're like this that means the amount of arcane dust that it will cost to craft them is higher than the amount I have here that's the only real difference there doesn't really matter uh, when the expansion is out in a couple of days I'll open at least 50 if probably 55 packs or more and that will get me about half of the entire expansion there's I believe about 135 cards in total that are coming out and you have to do some math there that most of the cards except for the legendary ones with the dragons you can have two copies of so that changes the numbers a little bit too last time we did shaman this time we're gonna do warlock hmm I'm not really sure what I'm looking for in warlock I guess just something new because the thing about warlock is you can either make a deck that uh, draws cards towards some goal there are some cards that will get powerful if you discard cards and and make your cards less valuable that way but then you, the warlock ability to draw more cards to adjust for the fact that you've discarded cards cost you two health so you're sacrificing your health a lot and that concept is a very dangerous concept to play the other way you can play on warlock is you can play demons and try to get powered up demons and we haven't seen a strategy that's worked very well with that in a long time or there is one card in the warlock card called renounced darkness that will get rid of all of your warlock cards and replace them with random cards from a different class that cost one less which is about the craziest gamble you can do but it sometimes feels like it's worth doing just because warlock cards in general aren't that helpful uh, warlock is a pretty difficult class to play and uh, even though it allows you to draw more cards which should be a major advantage in any card game and it just isn't the first card we that are getting expanded on here with the journey to Nguru is the one mana spell that's legendary so I know it's a quest card called the Lakari sacrifice and it's a quest to discard six cards and its reward is a nether portal we have no idea what the nether portal is so I'm probably going to end up once I have all these new cards once they're available to open the card packs I'm probably going to end up just trying to do every single quest just to know what they do uh, discarding six cards not incredibly difficult but pretty difficult and it will work well with the discard deck strategy though so there's something you could do with that quest it's not impossible although all of them seem pretty difficult and some of them seem kind of insane to even try the next card we have is a two mana spell called blood bloom the next spell you cast this turn cost health instead of mana hmm well this is kind of an amazingly interesting trade-off here it's definitely something new I think there's one other card that does somewhat similar things for the warlock but what it is effectively saying is that on the second turn if I had a 10 mana spell or if there was a card in the game which I don't believe there is that's a spell that costs more than 10 because there are a few cards that cost like 12 mana but they're creatures or even 15 mana there might be one or two I, I don't think that anything goes up that high though but as far as spells the highest spells I think I've ever seen is a 10 so on your second turn you play this you cast a 10 mana spell and it takes 10 health away from you so then you're down from your 30 health that you started with to 20 hmm there might be a strategy here 
but it's going to be a pretty specific strategy. It's going to require you to have the very perfect card to match with this. Uh, but let's say you just played this and then you played another two mana spell for two health or one mana spell for one health. It's still not... Well, no, actually that would be stupid, wouldn't it? it? To play a two mana spell and cost yourself two health because it's just the next spell you cast. The only way this makes sense is if you're willing to sacrifice on your second turn three health to play a three mana spell or more. It, it makes no sense that you would play this and then play another two mana spell and cost yourself damage. Unless you're playing a really weird strategy that has a card that improves its health and attack every time you take damage on your own side, which there is a card like that. So, uh, that there might be a little bit of a strategy there, but it's got to synergize and, and you're going to have to really think about that one. Moving on, the next character we have is a 2 mana, 2 health, 2 Two attack, two attack, two health. Beast card called the Clutch Mother Zavis. Whenever you discard this, give it plus two, plus two, and return it to your hand. Hmm, and it's a legendary card, so you can only have one. But you can discard it and improve its attack. And it's a beast, and you're not going to really do too much with a beast in the Warlock deck. This is the second time we've seen a beast added to a character class style card that is their own character class because you can't really do a beast deck under a warlock you could you could get a bunch of neutral beasts but it's not i don't think a strategy you could do right now that makes sense but it certainly seems like blizzard is pushing us towards the idea that we may in the future be able to make a beast deck that works with all nine of the character classes and that would be interesting this on itself you would have to discard it um at least a couple of times to get a real reward out of this uh, at two mana for two attack two health is fine to begin with if you discarded it two more times then for two mana it would be a six attack six health which is really good if you got it one more time, it would be an 8 and 8. So three times, you get a 4. It's a 10-10 for two mana. That's great. Any more would just be gravy. So uh, certainly certainly a strategy there if you're building a discard deck. Next card we have is a two mana spell called Corrupting Mist. Corrupt every minion. Destroy them at the start of your next turn. Actually, this is an amazingly helpful card for the Warlock because every other way to kill creatures under the, mer the Warlock requires you to either hurt yourself or uh, sacrifice a lot or spend a lot of mana on it. There's a demon I know that you play that does three damage to all the other creatures. And I would much prefer spend two mana to play this and have everybody killed uh, versus that. The other way you would do this is you could play Doomsayer which is a neutral card and if Doomsayer survives to your next uh, to the start of your next turn then everybody on the field dies. So this is just a magic spell version of Doomsayer and because it's the magic spell version it's actually better than Doomsayer because that's more difficult to defeat. The only way you can, you would be able to stop somebody from dying the next turn is to silence that minion on your own side. So that might work rather well. Of course, if you're playing something like I, Nexramus, I believe, is the card that brings everybody back to life at the end of your turn you might be able to still survive and there is a demon that has a death rattle that even when it dies it comes back to the field that that is the nightmare horse or whatever it's called uh, so there's ways you as the as the warlock character could 
negate this from affecting your own minions and there's ways your opponent can negate this but they aren't very many and for two mana and no damage to your health this is a very useful card for the warlock some an option he hasn't had up to this point that and i think people will take advantage of it moving on the next card is a three mana three attack three health beast again called the chittering tunneler as a battle cry, discover a spell, deal damage to your hero equal to its cost. Really? Mm. Yeah, I don't think you'd want to play this one. Not unless you're playing a strategy that requires you to hurt your own minion. Your, your own hero. Because you discover any random spell, you're going to be given three of them. There's a chance you may be given three ten mana spells. Which would do 10 mana, uh, 10 health damage to you. There's a chance you might be given three, uh, one mana cards. I bet they won't give you three zero mana cards ever. But then you would still have to take one damage to yourself just to get that spell. And whatever that random spell is, that it is, is not worth it. And because you don't have a choice here, this is a battle cry, it effectively invalidates this card unless you're specifically playing a strategy where you always want to hurt yourself your own hero which is kind of insane to make a strategy like that too so this is one of the few cards we've seen so far that i just in, can't see anybody really wanting to play it's not good it, it's cost way too much because it does damage to your hero to get a three attack three health beast and again the beast thing uh we haven't seen a synergy here that makes sense unless we see some neutral cards that really are starting to synergize with beasts in other characters decks the only beast decks i would play would be a druid or a hunter moving on the next card we have is a four mana three attack eight health demon called the lakari fellhound it has taunt and it has a battle cry to discard two random cards. So, if you're playing a discard deck, trying to discard this to get it powered up, or there's a few other things that have positive effects when they're discarded, like one of them is if you discard it, you it's automatically summoned to the field for free. Uh, this is definitely a very good card. Even if you're not doing a discard deck, though, for 4 mana to get a 3-8 with taunt, you're still getting a decently good card, even though you have to pay that 2 random discards. And the 8 taunt isn't terrible. It's a demon, so it might synergize with some other cards you have that, that improves de demons. There is one card that I think gives a plus 5, plus 5 to demons and makes them stronger. Uh, but just on itself, a four mana character should be something closer to a either zero eight with taunt, maybe a one eight with taunt. See, when you start to balance it out, you, you'd be like a four seven, a five six, or a six five. And when you're talking like a five six or a six five for four mana. It, come, it becomes really, really easier to see that this is a great card. Definitely going to try and play that one. Yeah, I'm probably going to make a discard deck anyway, so no, no reason not to. Next card we have is a 4 mana, 4 attack, 4 health beast called the Ravenous P Patoridax. Pterodax? Yeah, that's how you spell it. The P is on it. Pterodax. Uh... Battle cry, destroy a friendly minion to adapt twice. Now we're back to the adapt key phrase, and I don't know what adapt means. So that's the sticking point here. Almost certainly it's worth playing, though, because for 4 mana, 4 attack, 4 health, it is right on the curve, and then it destroy. If you have a friendly minion, it destroys them and it adapts twice. Maybe that gives it a two more health maybe that gives it a lot more health maybe it does something that i can't even imagine right now 
And then the other thought here is if you play this on your fourth turn and you have no other minions, then the battle cry can't activate. And then you've just got an average card. So you, you've got some options here that makes this a desirable card. Uh, but it does have a slight disadvantage of destroying a friendly minion. But on the Warlock, that's pretty much all the cards. All the cards are slightly overpowered, but they have some weird disadvantage that you have to pay. Yeah, you usually have to pay in blood to get it to work. And that's generally why I don't play the Warlock that much or succeed with the Warlock that much. Next card we have is a 5 mana spell called Feeding Time. Deal 3 damage to a minion. Summon 3 1 1 Pterodaxes. So, on its face, this is a good spell because it's effectively giving you 6 mana's worth of effects. I could see a card that does 3 damage for 3, and I could see a card that costs 3 mana for summoning 3 1 1 Pterodaxes. And you're getting both for five instead of six so it's one cheaper than it than I would expect it would be and it gives you pterodaxes which with this pterodax opens up the possibility in the future of us finding some kind of uh, synergy where pterodaxes get maybe extra health extra attack or some special abilities moving on the next card we have is the five mana one attack seven health elemental called the tar lurker it has taunt and it has plus three attack during your opponent's turn hmm this is an interesting trade-off here so the thing that's here is you I guess at the front of it you just uh, immediately would want to assume this is a 4-7 elemental for 5 mana and if you balance the 4-7 a little bit more you're back to a 5-6 or a 6-5 for 5 mana and it's still pretty good so not not as good as I particularly like it but it's still a pretty good card for 5 mana, I would say. The The only thing that I'm having the, a bit of a problem with here is I can't imagine a way to synergize or get around this that I would like and that would work. I would really like to figure out at some point if there's some way to... You would have to make elementals attack during the opponent's turn or something because you can't single line silence something and even if I did silence everything on the tar lurker he would just lose his taunt and always be a 1-7 hmm so yeah this is a weird trade-off but it opens also the possibility to more cards like this where they can make them slightly cheaper and still have them be powerful during the opponent's turn while not having them be able to attack. This is clearly a defense card and they've introduced a new concept here to make it only a defense card and a stronger defense card which is going to push the power curve particularly on characters that have taunt and, and are defense cards higher which means we'll probably start to see things that are five mana and zero one uh health zero one attack with seven health and taunt things like that are going to stop being playable if cards like that really exist instead they're all going to start having this happen and it will affect the length of games a little bit too uh, because it'll be a little bit more difficult to get past people's defenses with taunt characters and it makes taunt characters more useful uh, so it's an interesting way to go in the end I think it's a balance change so it will work for both sides but it may end up making games of Hearthstone even longer which I honestly would prefer the games of Hearthstone to be shorter because it takes me forever to get the quest done every three days as it is. 
Finally, last card for the Warlock, we have a 6 mana, 5 attack, 5 health creature called the Cruel Dinomancer. It has a death rattle. Summon the random minion you discarded this game. Summon a random minion you discarded this game. So, for 6 mana, being a 5-5, five, five, it's a little weak. And then its death rattle is not actually that great either. The only thing I could imagine is if you had this card along with this card and this has been discarded but it goes back to your hand and it still counts as something you could summon. Maybe that would make sense. Otherwise there's a lot of gambling going on here for a slightly weaker card and so I'm, I'm not super hot on this card either. Uh, so they in general haven't really done too much to improve Warlock. and. And that's that's what I expected. The discard deck does seem like it's more playable though. And then the quest was to discard six cards to get Nether Portal, and it, almost certainly you could do that. Uh, I don't think. Let's see. If we search here for discard, is there any cards that are neutral that you can discard? in all the cards at all like one card there's one card and it's death ring death wing that's neutral that discards everything else is warlock and so that is something to keep in mind is you only have about 13 cards that even have the ward discard here so it's a growing concept here's the one that summons if you discard, here's one that gets plus one, plus one whenever you discard. This one has you draw a card whenever you discard. This one has you discard when you summon a card. So there's still... Doing six is going to be uh, quite difficult still as it goes. You, you, you're going to have to have every single card that says discard in it uh, in your deck. Uh and then apparently Astral Communion is one card that has this card in the name too. Uh, so it's going to be pretty difficult to do a discard deck still. But Warlock decks in general still have problems. Anyways, that's the Warlock. Next time we will do the Warrior. And then after that we do the neutral cards. And then we will be done looking at all the cards. If you're watching this live, stay tuned. Otherwise, as always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want to friend or follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.